this is maybe stuff you should have asked me before you bought the car. <laughs> I have this really nice, and I've had this car for like several years. It was like a personal car of mine. It was an 83 Jaguar XJ6 Van den Pla, gold, cream interior, beautiful car, 80,000 original miles on it. And we had sorted it all out. Wizard had changed the uh, fuel pumps and the check valves. And, you know, we just, you know, it was a driver of mine. It was just a personal car. But, you know, I keep a accumulating cars and sometimes I collect them and I run out of space or money or room and it's like well sometimes I've had it for a while it might be time to move it on. We decided well let's throw it on eBay you know let's just throw it out there test the waters and you know, see what it'll bring you know we, might, we probably should sell it we don't drive it that much you know and I don't like if I got a car and I don't drive it much and it starts sitting you know, then I start thinking about selling. For the most part, unless it's something special, you just don't drive much. So so I'm like, yeah, because we, we had some other cars that had come in and we're like, oh, we're kind of replacing the Jaguar. We throw it up on eBay. I think we had like a 7,500 buy it now price. So I get a gentleman, he actually buys the car, like purchases the car and then starts asking questions. This is maybe stuff you should have asked me before you bought the car. So I sent him a video on the car, letting him know. Like, I mean, I was willing to let him out of the car. I didn't want to sell a car with somebody with some crazy expectations. You know, I can just soon sell it to somebody local. And they can see it, drive it, touch it, smell it, be happy with the car. I'm just nervous about that. So I did, I sent him the video to the car. He asked me all the questions. And the things that he's concerned with is like the window tent. And I'm kind of going, this is an 83 Jaguar, <laughs> like, you know, oh, can you remove the window tent? It's faded, and I'm going, this guy's no clue. Uh, he, has no, he has no idea about cars. He has no, uh, what kind of customer? I'm trying to figure out what kind of customer I'm dealing with. He's asking me all these questions that really are not the questions to be asking. They're just frivolous, like silly questions, you know, like, does the radio work or something like that, you know? And I go over the car, I tell him everything, and he's still, he's like, he's, I, I wanna buy the car. You know, and I'm like, okay, okay. And he's like, I'm gonna fly in and drive it home to Washington. And I'm going, this is an 83 Jaguar. I've had this car for years, it's never let me down. Anything can happen. And he's like, oh, it's okay, I got AAA. <laughs> this, was his, this was his response and I'm kind of going, this is a long trek, but I'm like, what do you do? They, they agree to everything. I try to let them out of the car, but they, can, they persist in buying the car and I know this is gonna end badly. You know, I just can't see how, you know, all the signs are just like sirens, you know, danger Will Robinson. I mean, this is not going well. We got it ready for him and I was terrified. I mean, we were checking over the car as best I could. You know, we're like preparing this car for a trip like I was driving myself cross country because this guy's flying in. I, it's out of my hands now. I mean, I, I've done everything I can do. I've done my due diligence. They come in from the airport, complete family, three kids, luggage for a cross country vacation trip home, like a three week trip from Kansas to Washington, DC. Her wife is some kind of ambassador, cultural ambassador. Their luggage will hardly even fit in the car. They they come out of this, this like van Uber, you know, like an Uber XL. The whole family piles out and they got like five suitcases. A Series 3 Jaguar trunk, is not very big. I'm going, oh my gosh. And like kids ranging from like four to like eight. So I literally have to like Tetris Jenga, pack the trunk for them. It barely, I mean, I like strategically packed the trunk, got, got their stuff. I think one bag had to, like, like a soft bag had to, had to sit in the side. They got three kids, right? I didn't think about this. The middle seat belt for the cars missing. Who checks the third seat belt in the back seat of a car? Who thinks that it's tucked in behind the seat? You know it's there. I don't think about that in my inspection to dig for the third seat belt. We got children and they've flown in and got dropped off and they're ready to get their trip. Thank goodness I have a Jaguar parts car 
in this salvage yard. <laughs> so I send my guys out there and I'm like, I mean, does this car even have a third seat belt? I don't know. Like, why is there no third seat belt? So my guys pull the seat out of the car and the brackets are there for whatever reason that seat belt was cut or removed or something like that. So we go out into the yard and lo and behold, we have the middle seat belt for the back seat. So we put in the seat belt and get it all bolted in, get the car back together. And they're just, they're going through the yard. The guy is walking through the yard. They're like, they hit the ground and they're like, oh, look at this. I mean, they're nice people. And they're, they're ex absorbing this American experience. This is not the car I would have chosen for that. So they're walking through, I can't even keep track of them. This, the wife and the kids are going this way. They're walking in the back of my salvage yard. They're going through cars where I can't even find them. And they're like, oh, look at this and look at that. And I mean, I don't even let kids in the yard. It's dangerous, you know? And I can't even, I'm trying to fix the car for them and get them on the road. And they're just taking pictures and going, they're just completely going through the yard. We get the car together. We tell them, hey, we got your car fixed. You know, we didn't charge them anything, you know, sorry about that. And they pile up in the car and they pull out. And I mean, this car is low. I mean, it's a little low in the back and all the luggage and the kids and they're strapped in. I always like take pictures of my customers and their cars and like, thank you for your business. It's kind of a thing that I do, you know? I take the picture and I post it like on our Facebook page, right? I was like, I didn't even, I took their picture and I didn't post it. I didn't even post it. Cause I'm like, this is, they're not gonna make it. I mean, not anything, you know, I'm just like, this is, I, I, I didn't want to jinx myself. I, I didn't say, and I can't say that they're not gonna make it. I didn't necessarily feel that way about the car, but knowing that that's a long trip over a long, there's a high probability that they're gonna have some sort of problem. Even if it's a brand new car, there's a chance of a breakdown. But I, and maybe I shouldn't, but I feel personally responsible, you know? Because I'm sending, it's like I'm sending off my children in this car, because I, I value my customers and their safety. So they're all happy and leaving, and I take their pictures, and I'm like, I'm not posting that. I'm not posting until they get home, you know? Because I'm like, I'm not jinxing myself. And this was like on a Friday afternoon. And they're staying at the hotel downtown, so they're checking out the sites in Wichita. And then, Nine o'clock in the morning, my phone rings. I've driven it, this car's never not started. Everything, the car won't start. I'm like, you haven't even left Wichita. I'm on my way. I'm 45 minutes away. Get in my car, grab my little handy tool kit. I'm not triple A though, but that's all right, I'm glad you called me. So I get there and I go to see the car and I get in the key and I crank it over and it cranks. You know, cause he couldn't even explain to me what it was doing. You know, so I get over there and so I pop the hood and it cranks, you know, I'm like, well, the motor sounds good. And I look over the boot on the airflow meter, the clamp, it just popped off. So I don't know if he was pop pumping the gas, but he probably he caused a backfire. Cause this is a fuel injection car. You don't touch the gas. You just crank it and start it. Don't know what happened. But anyway, so the airflow meter intake boot goes right on top of the engine, little simple clamp. And I looked there, it took me like literally open the hood. There's the problem right there. I mean, just, just because I know cars. So I pop it on there. I screw the clamp nice and tight. I go in there, hit the key. Perfect. And they're all like, yay, they're all clapping, you know, and they're just like, and they're not even mad. I'm more nervous than they are. You think they would be nervous about the trip? They're not nervous at all. They're leaving out of town. They stay in this hotel and we're going down Broadway and honking and waving and taking pictures of each other. And they're just happy as a clam and, and, and they leave and they're out of town. And then a couple days later, I get a picture. We're here, family picture, all good. Over here, they're sending me pictures, sending me pictures. And I'm like, they keep getting closer and closer to home. And I'm, the whole time I'm just like this. This is, I think it's like a two week trip that they planned with this car. And then I get a text, he's like, well, the car broke down. They were like almost home, you know? And, and what happened, I guess, I think like the, the smog pump had locked up or something like that, which, I mean, they could have just, cut the belt, <laughs> kept going probably. I don't think that it ran any other accessories. They would actually already gotten home. And he lets me know, hey, we made it home. The car broke down. I'm like, oh man, he tells me, you know, it was like uh, like 300 miles away or something like that. So we just put it at a shop and then we just all rented the car and drove home and then dropped it off at the repair shop and had it repaired. And me and the son got back in and flew back to the car and drove it back to finish the trip. And we love this car. 
and it just it's just a trip of their life. That was uh, two weeks of my life of just living on the edge for my customer and that Jaguar. And so really, I mean, it, it had a problem, but it really didn't let them down. Got them all the way home and they had a, a glitch. And uh, But it was just, I, I, it was cool that they actually flew back and drew the car and finished the trip. So that was, that was fun. That was uh, one of the most long drug out, nervous, nerve wracking uh, deliveries of a car I think I've ever had. <laughs> Who wants a free carbon fiber ring? Well, right now, Patrick Adair Designs is giving away a free carbon fiber ring with any purchase if you use the code VINWIKICF at checkout on their website. You can find them at the link in the description below. You can also follow along on Patrick Adair's YouTube channel. You've seen him here telling car stories, but over there, he documents his journey in entrepreneurism and some of the amazing things they do to create rings out of the most interesting materials from Earth and from space. So check them out now and thank them for their support of VINWIKI.